Okay, so this week we're going to be reviewing and we're going to do a re-quiz on lessons 8.1 through 8.3. And so in this video lesson, what I want to do is I want to talk about some problems that were like the problems on the quiz. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to get into trig functions and inverse trig functions and talk about some things that was a little bit confusing to help you prepare for the requiz. I'd like to pray if that's okay before we get started today. Father in heaven, thank you for your mercy and your kindness. Thank you for Jesus Christ and who he is to us. Help us to be looking towards him in all things, resting in him, having him as our confidence. I thank you for my student. I pray, Father, that you would help me in this video lesson to explain things in a way that's understandable. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So in this lesson, I want to first start with this problem. I've got a mountain here, and I've got at the very top of the mountain a radio tower. And far away on the ground, I've got a radio station. And so the angle of depression from the radio tower to the radio station is 21 degrees. And the question that I want to answer is how far in miles is the radio station from the radio tower? And so if you think back to the quiz that we took, 8.1 through 8.3, we had Thomas walking up a ramp. And the question in that problem was, how long was the ramp? This question is pretty similar to that question. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about a misconception that many people have or a mistake that many times students make when they solve this kind of a question. So the first thing I'm going to do here in yellow is I'm going to draw this altitude. And you can see that this is a right triangle. Now because the line of sight is parallel with the ground, what that means is that this angle down here by the alternate interior angle theorem is also 21 degrees. And that's how we're going to start to solve this problem. But what a lot of people do, what is a very, very common mistake, we'll call the distance along the ground x. And we'll go ahead and try to start solving this. We'll call this hypotenuse y. Well, which one should we solve for here, x or y? Let's go back to the question. How far in miles is the radio station, that's R, from the radio tower, that's T? And so what we're looking for here is the length of RT. Now a very, very common mistake to make is to think that the distance from the radio station to the tower is the distance along the ground. And that is what many students solve for. They'll solve for x, they'll solve for the distance along the ground. And that's kind of what happened in the quiz. A lot of people didn't find the length of the ramp, they found the horizontal distance along the ground. And there are some word problems that say find the horizontal distance. But this isn't one of them. So we're actually going to find the distance from R to T. How many miles is it from the radio station to the tower? So actually what we're trying to find here is the hypotenuse. We're trying to solve for the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and let's look at what we know from this problem. We know the height of the mountain, which we'll just call h, is equal to 3,960 feet. Okay. 
Well, immediately I know that the question says how far in miles. So when I find the answer for y, the hypotenuse, it's going to be feet. So I'm going to have to divide whatever number I get by 5,280. So one mile, just in case you didn't know, because some people don't, and that's okay. One mile is 5,280 feet. So I'm going to solve for y, the hypotenuse, in feet first. And then when I get my answer, I'm going to divide by 5,280. Okay, so I know the h value, I know the height. What I want to know is the hypotenuse. And h is opposite of this 21 degree angle here. So what I want is the sine function, the sine of 21 degrees. And I write it as a proportion. So I'm going to write this over 1 equals 3,960 over y, which is the hypotenuse. Then I cross multiply and I solve. So y, if I change the, uh, if I change these values, swap them up, y is equal to 3,960 divided by the sine of 21 degrees. Let's go ahead and find this to the nearest foot. So 3,960 divided by the sine of 21 degrees. And yeah, I'm gonna get a rather large number here and that's okay. I'm gonna get about approximately 11,050 feet. Now let's take that number and let's divide it by 5,000. 280 and so I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth and so this is about 2.1 miles and there we go we've now solved the problem so how far in miles is the radio station from the tower well it's about 2.1 miles this distance right here on the ground all the way to way up tippy top of the mountain that distance through the air is about 2.1 miles. So here's where I want to encourage you. When you solve a problem, ask yourself, are you being asked to find a horizontal distance? Because usually the problem will say directly, find the horizontal distance. Or am I being asked to find a hypotenuse? Now, usually a problem that has a ramp or a ladder against a wall or even a mountain problem like this, although I could rearrange this problem and say how far in miles is the radio station from the base of the mountain. If I said that, I'd be looking for the horizontal distance. But try to discern whether you're being asked to find for a horizontal distance or the hypotenuse. And usually if I ask for the length of a ladder, I want the hypotenuse because the ladder's leaning up against something. Or if I want the length of a ramp, then the ramp is leaning up against something. And so that would be a hypotenuse problem. All right. Well, let's get into what inverse trig functions are. And so in geometry, we're studying three trig functions. Now, I don't know if you knew this or not, but there are actually six trig functions. But we don't really concern ourselves with the remaining three. We concern ourselves with the primary three in geometry. Get to pre-calculus and then we'll talk about all six. So here are the three basic trig functions that we talk about. And so what does a trig function do? A trig function, which I'll just call trig, and this could be sine, cosine, or tangent, takes an angle measure and it gives you a ratio. So for example, here's a triangle, a right triangle, and this angle measure is 40 degrees. We'll call this x 
R and well, X is probably the worst thing I could have called that. So I'm not gonna call that X. I'm gonna call that Y, R and X. And so what does it mean to say the tangent of 40 degrees? Well, let me type tangent of 40 degrees in my calculator. The tangent of 40 degrees is 0 0.839 approximately, 0 0.839. Well, that my friends is a ratio. And that's the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. And so that's the ratio of y to x. And so more specifically, if I solved for y, I could write y as a function of x. y is 0 0.839 times x. So a trig function takes an angle and it gives you a ratio. If I said the sine of 40 degrees, then according to my calculator here, the sine of 40 degrees is approximately 0 0.643. And this is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. The cosine of 40 degrees is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, 0 0.766. And so the adjacent side is x and the hypotenuse is r. So that's the cosine of 40 degrees. Now, what does an inverse trig function do? So for example, I'm gonna write it like this, trig with the little inverse symbol above. An inverse trig function takes a ratio, and can you take a guess at, at to what it gives you? It gives you an angle. So, if, for example, I take the inverse tangent of 0 0.839, that should give me something very close to 40. And indeed it does. My calculator says 39.9966. Well, each time we find an angle, we're always gonna round to the whole number. So 40 degrees. So, okay. Let's look at a situation where we wouldn't have to necessarily use an inverse trig function. And then let's look at a situation where, yeah, we'd wanna use an inverse trig function. So here's a triangle. This is angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C. What is the measure of angle B? Well, here's a problem where we don't need the inverse trig function. I'm looking for this angle right here. And the reason why I don't need the inverse trig function is because angle B is complementary with angle A. So all I have to do is say 90 degrees minus angle A, which is 50 degrees, and that immediately gives me the measure of angle B. So that's a situation where I don't have to use an inverse trig function. I'm gonna call BCX and ACY. Now, can I find X and Y? Well, the answer is yes. Could I find X using the Pythagorean theorem? Well, let's at least try it. X squared plus Y squared equals 12 squared, and 12 squared is 144. So x squared plus y squared equals 144. But now we've got a problem because y is also an unknown. 
So I can't really use the Pythagorean theorem here to figure out X and Y. And so that's where trig's going to come in handy. 12 is my hypotenuse. X is the opposite side and Y is the adjacent side. So first, let me go ahead and use the sine of 50 degrees. That's defined to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 50 degrees over one is the opposite side, which is X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. And so now I know that X is equal to 12 times the sine of 50 degrees. And that is the exact answer. All right, well, let's find the approximate answer. 12 times sine 50 is about 9.19. And when we find lengths in this class, we're either gonna round them to the hundredth place or to the tenths. And so for right now, I'm gonna round this to the hundredth place. So now I have figured out X. All right, let's go ahead and find Y. Y is the adjacent side. So Y over 12, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. That by definition is the cosine of 50 degrees over one. I cross multiply the 12. And so the exact answer to the problem is that Y is equal to 12 times the cosine of 50. Now let's find the answer to the nearest hundredth place. 7.71. So now if I use the Pythagorean theorem, 9.19 squared plus 7.71 squared, I should get something pretty close to 12 squared, which is 144. 7.71 squared. And indeed I do. I get 143.9, which is very close to 144. So that's a way to check to see if we're doing things correctly. All right, when is a situation that you need to use an inverse trig function? So here would be a scenario where you'd have to use an inverse trig function. Let me go ahead and write this triangle out. This is going to be triangle X, Y, Z. And I'm gonna say that the hypotenuse is 28 centimeters. And I'm gonna say X, Y is, let's say equal to 12 centimeters. Now, what I want to do here is to solve the triangle. So, I want to know how much the measure of angle X is. I want to know how much the measure of angle Z is. Y is a freebie, right? How much is Y? 90 degrees. All right, and I wanna find YZ. Well, I could find YZ using the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> I could say <clears throat> YZ squared plus 12 squared equals 28 squared. So YZ squared plus 144 is equal to 28 squared. That's 784. Now let's subtract this 144. 784 minus 144 is 640. Not 648, 640. Well, that makes YZ <clears throat> equal to the square root of 640. That's equal to the square root 
of 64 times the square root of 10, and 64 is a perfect square, so that's eight square roots of 10. And to the nearest hundredth, I can go ahead and type in eight square roots of 10. Okay, so actually to the nearest hundredth, that's gonna be 25.30. I still put the zero here because I want to the nearest hundredth. So it is possible to use the Pythagorean theorem to find YZ. But to find angle Z, I have to use an inverse trig function. Now, 25.30, that's the adjacent side <clears throat> to this angle Z. But I want to use the numbers that were given at the beginning because I have to remember that 25.3, as good of an answer as it is, it's an approximation. And I wanna use the exact answers. So 12 is opposite of angle Z, and 28 is the hypotenuse. So I'm looking at the sine function. The sine of the measure of angle Z over one is by definition 12 over 28. And so the way that we solve this is we use the inverse sine. So the measure <clears throat> of angle Z is the inverse sine of 12 over 28. And when you type this in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal answer. And we're gonna take that decimal answer and we're gonna round it to the nearest whole number. So I get 25.37. Well, that's not enough to round it to 26. So I'm gonna say that angle Z is about 25 degrees. Now I can find angle X very easily. So angle X is going to be 90 minus 25. And so the approximate value for angle X is 65 degrees. And now the triangle is solved for completely. One of the problems that uh, people really struggled with was to find the geometric mean of two numbers. So here's the number three, and here's the number one ninth. And I want to find the geometric mean of the two numbers and the final answer should be in simplest radical form. So what you do to find the geometric mean is you first take the two numbers that you're given and you multiply them. And then you take the square root of what you've multiplied. So three times one ninth is three ninths. And that reduces to one third. Now the order of operations says that this is the square root of one over the square root of three. And it turns out that the square root of one is the number one because one times one is one. Now while this answer is correct, it's not in simplest radical form. So what we do is we take one over the square root of three and we rationalize it by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of three. And so the numerator is the square root of three and the square root of three times the square root of three is three. And now that's simplest radical form. Another problem is this. Let's say that X equals 21 and Y is equal to 84. What is the ratio of Y to X? What is the ratio of y to x? 
in simplest radical form? Well, I have a lot of people doing this. They'll say, well, that's 21 over 84, which is 1 fourth. So the ratio is 1 fourth. But the answer to the question is, what is the ratio of y to x? And this is the ratio of x to y, not y to x. There is a difference. The ratio of y to x would be 84 over 21. And that would be 4 to 1. And so you would write your answer like this, y to x equals 4 to 1. Let me give you another one of those questions. Let's say I said 25x equals 15y. Same question. What is the ratio of y to x? Well, because I want the ratio of y to x, that means I have to have y in the numerator and x in the denominator. That's what y to x means. So to solve this question, I've got to divide both sides by 15x, because that will keep y in the numerator. And so this becomes 25 over 15, and this becomes y to x, y over x. Then I reduce 25 over 15, and that's 5 over 3. And so the ratio of y to x, which I would write like this, is equal to 5 to 3. So a very common mistake that I see is a lot of people are writing the answer as the ratio of x to y and not y to x. There is a difference between the two. Whenever you say a ratio of a to b, you imply that a is the numerator and b is the denominator. So you have to know how to calculate those. All right, that is our review lesson for today. I hope you guys are doing well. School is almost over. We don't have much long to go. I'm praying for you, and I want you to know that. God bless you, wherever you are today.